Dear friends in Open Innovation, I welcome you all on behalf of the organizers to this third edition of the Open Innovation 2.0 conference. I'm Bruce Halmelin from the European Commission, speaking a bit later, but we open the conference with the greeting by Martin Curley from Interlabs Europe, who is the chair for the Open Innovation Strategy and Policy Group of the European Commission. So Martin, even if you are not here physically, we will see and hear you in a while. Martin, please. Good morning. Huva huva Manta. My name is Martin Curley, Vice President and Director of Intel Labs Europe and Chair of the OSPG. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to address you today at the opening of the third edition of the Open Innovation 2.0 conference here in ESPU. And together with your co-hosts, uh, Broer and Marku, I want to thank you uh, for being here for the next couple of days. Sorry that I can't be with you face to face, but I'm already looking forward to next year's fourth edition uh, where I hope to, hope to see you. Um, Open Innovation 2.0 has gained a lot of momentum as a methodology and a paradigm uh, since we last talked and I'm delighted to see that particularly Horizon 2020 we some of see some of the footprints of Open Innovation 2.0 where we've seen quite a significant shift from just a focus on research uh, to a real focus on high quality research but actually high quality output and impact and, and, and innovation. In fact at Intel Labs Europe uh, in, the, in the last week and in the next week we, we kick off uh, two significant Horizon 2020 programs that are using the idea of OI2 at, at the core. Uh, one example is a project called uh, Real Value, uh, which is about transforming the way energy grids uh, work and how we can better integrate renewables and how we can bring savings uh, using demand response type approaches uh, to individual consumers. And by the end of this project, we'll have about 1,200 installations and user zones in Latvia, in Germany, and in Ireland of this uh, new approach and we think we'll be able to test this you know, with, with deep user involvement and if it's successful potentially lay the foundation for a two, new type of electricity grid in, in Europe where we see benefits for the utilities, for the network operators but particularly for the, for the consumers. Another project that has just kicked off is called Organicity. Um, this is a project where we'll have living labs in the city of London, Aarhus in Denmark, and in Santander in, 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 Santander in Spain. And here, 25% of the budget is actually reserved for new innovations and uh, idea projects that emanate from ideas that actually come from, from individual citizens. I think this is a really good example of the quadruple helix um, innovation configuration and at work. Now, Innovation is a lot around um, adoption. Um, according to the OECD, 80% of innovation value comes from adoption and just 20% of innovation value comes from the innovation creation phase. And we often get distracted in thinking it's all about the creation and arguably FP7 was heavily biased towards um, innovation creation. Um, and as we develop the Open Innovation 2.0 methodology, adoption is really at the core. Uh, Robert Madeline often reminds Brewer and I that it's not about the methodology and paradigm, it's about actually how it's used and how we're using Open Innovation 2.0 to transform cities or transform our energy grids or transform our transportation systems to make them more energy efficient, more time efficient and, 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 and particularly safer. Uh, a core idea in Open Innovation 2.0 is the idea of patterns. Uh, we have consistently presented, you know, here are the 20 key characteristics or patterns uh, that we see in Open Innovation 2.0. Everything from shared vision and shared value to business model innovation, innovation to servitization. And at the core of this growing Open Innovation 2.0 community, as indeed is that first pattern, the pattern of shared vision and shared value, I think we can you know, honestly say that 
together, we, we actually have a shared vision of where the, the practice of open innovation 2.0 can go and how it can be used to transform not just our economies, but our societies. And in doing so, we're creating a lot of um, shared value. Uh, the Roman philosopher Seneca, he once said that um, the way is long if one follows precepts or rules. The way is short if one follows patterns. And that's the whole idea of the use of characteristics, or particularly patterns, as we try and evolve and disseminate this core knowledge around Open Innovation 2.0. Uh, we want to present these patterns so they can be adopted by whoever, be it a corporation, a university, a you know, government, a city, a hospital, uh, so that they can accelerate the path to value through, uh, through innovation. Now you hear later from the Nokia chairman who laments and, and talks about the fact that here in Europe, You will experience a lot of open innovation here with the positive you could say, igni ignitions of, of ideas to innovation. We will see whether we can go to the next part of the video. But of course there you see it, how difficult it is to integrate European content, uh, probably Japanese and Chinese components and American software. <laughs> so definitely collaboration is, is, is needed. I can move to, to some points which I think are, are very important. Could I have the slides, slides up and running, please? On, on innovation and how, how really to capture the moment. Well, techniques, can you please put the slides on? I can see them from the screens, but you can't. Carpe diem, okay, fine. It's really about capturing the moment. The moment is, is, is now. We cannot wait. We should not wait. And, and really, when looking at innovation, I think one of the problems is that we have too many definitions and people are stuck to, to plenty of, of definitions instead of really seeing that innovation is to make things happen. And how, to, how can we make things happen faster with less risk and really capturing the intellectual capacity of, of everyone? We cannot afford to, to lose any of the emerging ideas, we cannot afford to, to lose anything which makes innovation more successful, faster, and suiting all the players. So it's really about making things happen, and what we have done in, in the Open Innovation 2.0 group is that we have clearly seen that the paradigm is, is changed. It's not anymore the linear science-based innovation which we are talking about. It's more like a, a kettle where you put in all the different ingredients needed. Well, in, as we say in the quadruple helix, where the user-centric, user-driven innovation is, is very important. And really having the systemic approach. Quadruple helix is actually quite an interesting tool, because again, we can clearly think about that as, as creating something new. To create new markets, you need to have actually the users involved actively, seamlessly, because then you are also stretching the boundaries. It's about co-creation of new products and services based on technologies, societal change, and the needs. And having that all in, toge in together with experimental, real-world experimental approach, we can see what fails, what scales. Again, failing early means that we are not wasting our efforts to, to wrong areas. Scaling up means, again, that we can take the advantage of speeding up the whole process. What we have also seen, and that is in, in this booklet which you have, we have in, in, in the white paper by Martin Curley and I discussed the importance of cross-border uh, 
innovation, again making the, the collisions ignite new ideas, new innovations to be brought and experimented in the real world. So we have actually developed the, the innovation ecosystem, well, visual, very much based on, on what we have in, in Chesborough's original model of, of open innovation. We have those funnels, but the, the difference is that we have plenty of those, and you have, as individuals, plenty of different roles, both professional and private, simultaneously in, in that ecosystem. Breaking boundaries and making the ecosystem fluid is one of the big challenges. This picture is also in, in the background documents which you have received. I have just highlighted some of the important quadruple helix components, intersectional network, co-creation, which I think are, are the new elements which we need to put into place when scaling up European innovation. So we are really moving to a new innovation space where also entirely new skills are needed. It's about curators who take care of solid contents and it's about the bridges who interlink, make the collisions happen and ignite new ideas. Not, of course, undermining the importance of actual competences and knowledge. But we are, are moving to, to quite an interesting new innovation space also based on, on the power of the crowds. How to use that better to filter out what is successful and, and what is not. We will speak about that from different angles during the conference because again the conference has two main themes. One is really innovation governance in Europe or non-governance and then another element is how to scale up open innovation into practice. I end up with, with this picture really saying that the paradigm change is real. We see different rule of, rules of the game. Well, it's, it's about interdependency, cross-fertilization, mash-up of ideas, you could say boiling kettle, orchestration rather than management or, or control, and actually removing the boundaries between the different disciplines, different stakeholders to get a, a fluid innovation ecosystem in place. Just some practical things. You have Wi-Fi connection, uh, out open, you don't need any passport for that, and then you see also the Twitter had hashtags which you can use both following the outcome of the conference, the development of the parallel sessions, and well, using also that actively you yourselves. And with this, I hand over to, to Marco Marcula, who is representing the, the third organizing pillar, Alto University, but of course, Marco has plenty of other roles as well. Marco, please.